This photo of Che, Che Guevara, you're all familiar with it. It's been printed on countless t-shirts worldwide. It was taken just 63 years ago. It's been a long time and yet it remains a cult object. Like this photo, several other snapshots have become iconic over time as well. The portrait of Albert Einstein, the photo of Marilyn Monroe above a subway entrance, as well as lunch atop a skyscraper, and also the photo of young Afghan girl with green eyes. All these photos have a story that we are going to tell you with Lauren Malka. So Lauren has recently joined our team. She loves pop culture, and I can tell she has a gift for uncovering surprising information. Let's start right away with the photo of Che. This photo by Alberto Corda is the second most replicated image in Western art, following the Mona Lisa. To think that it remained in the photographer's drawers for almost seven years, and most importantly, it never even earned him a single dime, not a single cent. Here's its story. It's the 5th of March, 1960, in Havana. The day before, a cargo ship carrying vital ammunition for Cuba catastrophically blew up in the port. In total, nearly 100 people died. For President Fidel Castro, there's absolutely no doubt. It's a CIA plot. So he decides to give a speech to pay tribute to the victims. A few meters from him in the stands is Alberto Corda, tasked with photographing him. But always on the lookout, the photographer quickly manages to spot Che Guevara, who approaches the balustrade to gaze at the crowd. Without a second thought, Corda just has time to press his camera twice before Che disappears. The moment lasts less than 30 seconds. He presents the photos to his newspaper, but the one of Che is not selected. It is not until the month of June 1967 that an Italian publisher, Gian Giacomo Feltrinelli, stumbles upon the gem. He asks Corda for the price. A gift, replies the photographer. The publisher, who is a very clever businessman, takes the print and turns it into an unsigned poster that he sells for $5 each. And he wins the jackpot. What a nose for business. Indeed, a few months later, Che dies assassinated by gunshot in Bolivia. Corda's photo then makes the front page of the world's biggest newspapers. The photo is even printed on t-shirts. They make poster prints that sell like hotcakes. The snapshot is even screen printed by Andy Warhol. But the most incredible thing about all this is the fact that its creator never once claimed a single cent for it. Alberto Corda died in 2001 without any regret. For him, this snapshot was, as he said himself, just a stroke of luck. Second photo that I really love, come on. It's the most famous photo of Albert Einstein. I'm sure you're familiar with it, but maybe not with its story. On March 14, 1951, Einstein has just celebrated his 72nd birthday in New Jersey. It's late, he wants to go home, but he's already an icon at the time. A horde of journalists waits outside to photograph him. He joins his friends in a car, and puts on a grumpy face so they'll stop paparazziing him. Until the moment when a photographer, Arthur Sass, shouts at him, Could we get one final smile for your birthday, Mr. Einstein? Annoyed, Einstein looks him straight in the eyes and sticks out his tongue. The photo is exceptional, but the agency hesitates to publish it. They're afraid of offending the great genius. Eventually, it is sent to the press and ends up on the front page of a French newspaper. Albert Einstein won't hold it against the photographer and the press. He loved self-deprecation. And then, behind this behavior, there's a real message that he will decipher himself. He writes, I've always had difficulty accepting authority, and in this case, sticking out my tongue at a photographer who expects a solemn pose means that one can refuse to play the game of representation. All is said, well, this act of rebellion won't prevent Albert Einstein from ordering nine copies from Arthur Sass. He even personally autographed a copy for a journalist friend which will then be sold at auction at the price of $74,324. Proof that a funny face is sometimes worth more than a pretty smile. Not bad, huh? Well, everything is relative. All right, next one. Lunch atop a skyscraper. That's the name of this legendary photograph showing American workers on a break. They seem to be relaxing, as if they were at the counter of a bistro while they're sitting on a steel beam overlooking Manhattan. Without any safety measures, more than 240 meters above the ground. So could it be just a simple trick? Not at all. This snapshot was taken on September 20th, 1932 during the construction of the famous Rockefeller Center. The workers are real workers from the construction site. However, it's a stage scene. 
These 11 Masons were requested to smile and pose for an advertisement that would appear in the New York Herald Tribune. Well, the objective was to sell office space within the building. But what's even more dizzying is the historical context of this photo. We're in the aftermath of the 1929 stock market crash, a time of unprecedented social and economic crisis in the US. This time period is referred to as the Great Depression. In fact, billionaire John Rockefeller, who's at the origin of this cultural and commercial complex, wants to make Americans dream, and he intends to show it, with an image of workers happy to build the future capital of the world. Except that the reality is actually much darker. The 11 men captured in the picture are part of the 4,000 workers, and they were paid $1.50 per hour by the billionaire. It's a miserable salary for the time, but they have no choice they prefer to risk their lives rather than be unemployed. For your information, it's worth knowing that on average, one in 10 workers would suffer a fatal fall. For every 10 floors, the names of some of them were revealed. Sonny Glynn, Matty, O'Shaughnessy, Joseph Eckner, and Joe Curtis. For the most part, they were Irish immigrants. Well, today, the people of New York consider these men to be part of their own family. And now, next photo. If Marilyn Monroe remains a timeless icon, it's partly due to this particular photo. I should say these photos because it's not unique. Dozens of similar shots were taken that day by a whole crowd of photographers. They were taken in September 1954 in New York. The actress appears in Billy Wilder's famous movie The Seven Year Itch. Before filming, Billy Wilder called on photographer Sam Shaw to create the film's aesthetic. Upon reading the script, Shaw spots a scene where Mary Lynn walks down the street and steps over a subway grate which lifts her white dress. That will be the movie poster, he says. To create buzz, the photographer then organizes a fake shoot of the famous scene in New York to which he invites the entire press. Several hundred journalists, photographers and eager fans of Marilyn gather to witness Marilyn's dress flying up over the air vent. The photographers present that evening are all convinced they have access to the behind the scenes of a historic shoot. Next day, the photos were published on the front pages of all the magazines. The story could have ended there, but as you will see, this episode is going to have unexpected repercussions in the life of Marilyn Monroe. Anticipating the media frenzy that this photo would cause, as it was rather daring for the time, the dress rises above the knees of the star. Joe DiMaggio, her husband, flies into a rage and violently hits Marilyn in the face. Her makeup artist would later recount that it took hours to conceal the marks of the blows. DiMaggio was not prosecuted. At that time, unfortunately, violence against women was not a topic of concern. But Marilyn, hurt both literally and figuratively, will be merciless with her husband. She leaves him shortly after and makes the choice to spread her wings by founding her own production company, Monroe Productions, Get ready for our last photo. This one. Have you seen that look? Mesmerizing. Taken in 1984 by American photographer Steve McCurry, this photo, known as the Afghan girl with green eyes, or the young Afghan, graces the cover of National Geographic the following year. And it's fair to say, it shook the world. After it was published, millions of people stepped forward to volunteer at refugee camps. The girl is 13 years of age when Steve McCurry meets her at a girls' school located in an Afghan refugee camp in Peshawar, Pakistan. He feels she is shyer than the others, but he manages to photograph her. Once he's back in New York, the photographer is struck by the image's powerful impact, an intense and lost gaze, he remarks. The story could have ended there, but Steve McCurry, aware of the impact that this look had on millions of people around the world, decides to meet his model again. He doesn't even know her name, so he searches for many years. And then, in 2002, he succeeds in finding her. She has been living in one of the most dangerous regions of Afghanistan. Her name is Sharbat Gula, which means sweet water flower girl in Pashto, one of the official languages of the country. She knows nothing of her fame, and frankly, it's the least of her worries. She lives secluded with her husband and daughters in extreme poverty. It's only in 2021 that Sharbat Kula realizes how significantly this photo can change her life, that of her daughters, and perhaps even that of other refugee children. Today, at over 50 years of age, after receiving offers of assistance from various governments, she has decided to continue her life in Italy, where her daughters are free to go to school. And she's starting a new chapter, hopefully, for a sweeter life. Thank you, Lorne. How can a simple photo actually change the way we see the world? That's the power of this form of expression. 
So if you like this video, feel free to suggest other iconic photos in the comments and we will reveal the stories behind them. And if you were particularly struck by today's photo, go ahead, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you very soon with new interesting topics.